First of all, thank you all for helping this channel grow. We truly appreciate the support. Making these documentaries isn't easy. We do weeks, sometimes months of research. None of the narrator lines is copied from any website. All the lines were written by us. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. You're watching the Capone and North story. Sit back and relax. CNN was a hardcore rap group from New York City. In 1997, they released their classic debut album, The War Report. The War Report album made CNN a legendary rap group. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the duo full potential. Capone stayed in and out of jail in the beginning of the group's career. This is their story. Victor Santiago Jr., also known as Noriega, born September 6, 1977 in Queens, New York. Nori is Puerto Rican and African American. He grew up in Lafrak City. His father, Victor Santiago Sr., was a Golden Glove boxer. He gave Nori a handgun to protect his mother when he was only 13 years old. At an early age, Nori jumped off the porch. He began selling crack cocaine for older drug dealers in the neighborhood. One of his older friends was a guy by the name of E Moneybags. B Money Bags was well known throughout Queens. He was allegedly a big time brick dealer. B Money Bags bought Nori his first pair of Timberland boots. People in the neighborhood called Nori Poppy. Most of his friends were African American. They taught Nori a lot about the black culture. In 1990, him and some of his friends began rapping, but they wasn't that good. At the time, Nori was only known for being a young small time crack dealer in the neighborhood. That would soon change. In January of 92, the classic movie Juice came to theaters. The movie inspired Nori to shoot people. Not long after watching the movie, Nori had allegedly took a crackhead's gun and shot him with it. Shortly after that, Nori went back to the movies to watch Juice again. This time he seen the guy who had stole his bicycle months prior. After watching the movie, Nori approached the guy and shot him outside of the movie theater. Nori was later arrested and had to serve time for attempt of murder. He would spend the next three years in Greenhaven Prison. There he met 16-year-old Kim Holly, later known as Capone. Capone was serving time for attempt of murder as well. He had shot a police officer during a shootout. Capone is of Haitian descent. He grew up in Queensbridge Projects. He was good friends with guys such as Havoc from Mob Deep, Tiny the twins Gambino and Scarface, Big Noid, and several other people from the 41st side of Queensbridge. Capone lived in the same building as future NBA player Ron Artest, which was right next to Havoc Building. At an early age, Capone had a reputation for cutting people across the face with razors. Capone and Nori met in prison. They would often play basketball together. Capone liked Nori's game. The two quickly became friends, and Nori moved over to Capone's side of the prison so they could play on the same basketball team. Nori decided to read a Bible-sized book on Panamanian dictator Mon Well Noriega. Guys in his cell block didn't think that Nori would read the whole book. Once Nori read the whole book, Capone gave him the name Noriega. Nori and Capone didn't plan to be rappers. Nori began writing rhymes in his cell at night and then rapped the rhymes to the guys on his cell block the following day. Nori would eventually battle rap an older inmate who was known as the best rapper in the prison. Nori won the battle and became a little popular in prison. Capone and Nori were two of the youngest guys at Greenhaven Prison and were respected by the older inmates. The two stuck together and made the best out of prison. Meanwhile, out on the streets, Queens Bridge was once again making noise in the hip hop world. Mob Deep had just released their debut album Juvenile Hell in 93 and Nas released his debut album Millmatic in 94. Nas instantly became the top MC in Queensbridge and one of the best MCs in the game. He was signed to Columbia Records at the time. Capone was released from prison in 94. Nori was sad. He didn't want his friend to leave him. Capone went back to Queensbridge and began selling drugs again. He began hanging out with Mob Deep during the making of the infamous album. He became a part of their entourage. He fought with the crew and even allegedly cut a few people across the face during some of the brawls. 
Capone was loved on the 41st side of Queensbridge. A lot of people feared him as well. Tragedy Gaddafi, formerly known as Intelligent Hoodlum, started off in a rap group by the name of Super Kids, along with DJ Hot Day. In 1986, Marley Marl produced two singles for the duo, The Tragedy Don't Do It and Stun of the Block. Tragedy even became a member of the Juice Crew alongside MC Shan, Cool G Rap, and Big Daddy Kane. Tragedy had a bright future, but unfortunately, in 1987 he was convicted of robbery and had to serve time in prison at the age 16. While serving time in prison, Tragedy became a 5 percenter. When he was released from prison in the late 80s, he began going by the name Intelligent Hoodlum and eventually signed a deal with a and Records. On July 10, 1990, he released the self-titled album Intelligent Hoodlum. The album peaked number 52 on the U.S. Top R&B and Hip Hop albums. Some hip hop fans called the album a classic. The singles Black and Proud and Back to Reality are both classic songs. Tragedy released another album in 93 titled Tragedy Saga of Hoodlum. After appearing on the motion picture soundtrack of Posse, Tragedy no longer went under the name Intelligent Hoodlum. He was done with conscious hip hop. Tragedy became Havoc's mentor. He taught Havoc a lot about rapping and even gave Havoc his name. Tragedy advised Havoc to be a solo rapper. He didn't like Prodigy's style in the beginning. Before Nas, Tragedy was the best MC in Queensbridge. He even inspired Nas and other young Queensbridge MCs. By the mid-90s, Tragedy's career was headed down a dead-end street. He began searching for younger talent to manage and even sign. After hearing Capone rap in 94, Tragedy decided to put together a demo and shop for Capone a record deal. Around this time, Capone was apprehended by the law when he sold crack cocaine to an undercover. To keep from going to jail, he allegedly gave the police false information about a murder that had just taken place. Nori was released from prison in 95. He tried to contact Capone as soon as he came home. He learned that Capone was on the run from the law. The two had reunited. At the time, Capone and Tragedy had a demo deal. Tragedy had purchased studio equipment to make beats for the demo. Capone, along with a few other MCs, began working on music. Capone told Tragedy that he wanted to rap with his friend from jail. Tragedy didn't want to work with Nori at first, but still agreed to meet him and hear him rap. Nori's voice and flow impressed Tragedy. This was the birth of Capone and Nori Egg, also known as CNN. CNN began recording music, and in October of 95, they were the Source magazine and signed hype column. Nori began hanging out in Queensbridge on the 41st side with Capone and Tragedy. Nori fell in love with Queensbridge. The pretty girls, the fights, the shootings, the famous rappers all attracted Nori to the neighborhood. Nas was now one of the top MCs on the East Coast, and Mob Deep's album The Infamous was taking over the streets. Queensbridge was stronger than ever. The door was open for Capone and Noriega. At first, people looked at the duo as a fake Mob Deep. The two groups had a lot in common. Prodigy and Nori both grew up in Lafrak City, and Havoc and Capone both grew up in Queensbridge. Prodigy and Nori both had dark, rough voices, and Havoc and Capone both had light, smooth voices. Nori and Prodigy were the same complexion, and Havoc and Capone were almost the same complexion as well. Back in 1995, Capone had lied to homicide detectives to get out of trouble for selling to undercover police officer. He lied about murder that Havoc's younger brother, Killer Black, committed. Capone even took the stand. Killer Black still ended up beating the murder case, and Capone and Killer Black remained friends. Didn't no one in Queensbridge ever question Capone about the situation. In 1996, the duo signed a record contract with Penalty Recordings. Nori and Capone both received a check for only $5,000. The duo were back to selling crack within weeks. They began recording their debut album, The War Report. At the time, the East Coast West Coast War was taking place. The duo teamed up with Mob Deep and recorded LALA. Before the album was completed, Capone goes back to jail for violating parole. Nori was forced to complete the album himself with the help of Tragedy. The War Report was released on June 17, 1997. 
the album was an instant classic. It peaked number 21 on the US Billboard 200 and number 4 on the US Top R and B Hip Hop albums. The album went on to sell over 500,000 copies and became one of the best hip hop albums of all time. Nori was now a rap star. People back at Lafrak City tease him because he hung out in Queensbridge so much. They began calling him Queensbridge. One time Nori even shot a guy from his neighborhood for joking around. Nori allegedly shot a lot of people. A then with a record deal, he still had to live in Lafrak City with his mother and sell crack cocaine. Before Capone went back to prison, him tragedy and Nori had gotten into it with the infamous Mob Deep. One night, members from Mob Deep's crew allegedly jumped Nori in front of a nightclub and stole his jewelry. Nori and his crew allegedly returned and shot at the Mob Deep who hit a tiny in the back. Days before, Nori had allegedly shot someone from Queens Bridge in the thigh. Nori was no longer welcomed in Queensbridge. Capone was stressed out sitting in prison. His mother had just died and he thought that his music career was over. All he had to his name was a $10,000 check from his mother's life insurance. Nori began focusing on his solo career. Him and Tragedy didn't get along. They were no longer working together. In 97, Nori began working on his first solo album. He worked with producers such as L.E.S., Swiss Beats, Marley Marl, Track Masters, and new up and coming producers by the name of the Neptunes. On July 7, 1998, Nori Ager released his debut album, titled Deno Ari Under Penalty Records. The album sold 165,000 copies in its first week of release and was later certified platinum. It peaked number three on the US Billboard 200 and number one on the US R&B Hip Hop Albums Billboard. The single Super Thug produced by the Neptunes peaked at number 36 on the Billboard Hot 100 and reaching number one on the Hot Traps Ongs chart. Nori was now one of the biggest rappers in the game and was now making money. He kept in touch with Capone and often sent him money. Capone became famous in prison. MTV even came to visit him once. Capone even began sleeping with female prison guards. His solo album was highly anticipated by the streets. Nori no longer had beef in Queensbridge. He was still good friends with Nas, Cormega, Havoc, and other Queensbridge guys. Nori was upset with tragedy about his record contract with Penalty. The two was no longer hanging out. Around this time, Nori had met the late great rapper Big Pun in the studio. The two quickly became good friends. They began hanging out all the time. Big Pun even made it clear that if anyone had beef with Nori, they had beef with him. According to Nori, Big Pun was his best friend in the music industry. Nori began working on his second solo album in 1998. He had just lost his father to cancer. This put Nori in a very dark place. On August 24, 1999, Nori released Melvin Flint, The Hustler. The album reached the top 10 of the Billboard 200 and went certified gold. Melvin Flint, The Hustler is considered a classic by many hip hop fans. Songs such as Blood Money Part 3 and Sometimes were the heart of the album. Around this time, Nori had started his own record label by the name of Thugged Out Militainment. Capone was released from prison in 1999, and the duo began working on the second CNN album. Nori helped Capone out a lot financially. He set him up in a penthouse and bought him clothes and jewelry. CNN released their second album, The Reunion, on November 21, 2000 on Tommy Boy Records. Unfortunately, shortly after releasing the album, Capone was sent back to prison for violating probation. On the single Bang featuring Foxy Brown, Foxy sends shots at rapper Lil' Kim. In 2001, CNN were involved in a shooting that took place outside New York radio station Hot 97. Someone in rapper Lil' Kim's entourage had allegedly shot someone in CNN's entourage. Surveillance cameras recorded the shooting, and Lil' Kim and her friend C. Gutter end up serving time in prison. On February 7th of 2000, Nori's close friend Big Pun died from a heart attack. This broke Nori's heart. When he got the news, he kicked everyone out of his place because he was so hurt. Nori loved Big Pun, and Big Pun loved Nori. The two were like brothers.
the duo would soon leave Tommy Boy and sign a deal with Def Jam Records. Tommy Boy retained the rights to the names Capone and Oriega because they allegedly owed Tommy Boy more albums. The group shortened its name to CNN, and Noriega began going by simply Nori. Nori released his third studio album, titled God's Favorite, in 2001. The single Nothing produced by the Neptunes reached 10 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming his biggest hit single. The album peaked at number 3 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart and sold over 120,000 units in its first week. It was later certified platinum. Capone was released from prison again in 2002. The duo recorded a new album in 2003, titled New Religion, but it was shelved by Def Jam. Most of the songs from the album were on the 2004 compilation album, titled Thugged Out Militainment, What Up To The Hood. In 2005, Def Jam released Capone from his contract, but kept Nori. Capone's flow wasn't the same. He released his debut album, Pain Time, and Glor later that year under Fast Life Records. The album was a failure critically and commercially. In 2006, Nori released his fourth studio album, titled Den Oari Y La Familia, Yatu Say, under Jay-Z's Rock La Familia label. Nori decided to go back to his Latino roots. The reggaeton hip-hop album was made in both English and Spanish. It peaked at number 82 on the US Billboard, 202 on the US Top Latin Albums Billboard. Nori would go on to release three more solo albums, Capone released two more albums, and CNN would go on to release three more albums as well. Many say that their 2015 album Lessons was CNN's best work since the reunion. In 2012, CNN began beefing with Prodigy for Mob Deep. Prodigy exposed Nori and Capone in his 2011 book titled My Infamous Life, the autobiography of Mob Deep's Prodigy. The book had a lot of people from Queens upset. Prodigy talked about Nori getting robbed and beat up, and he talked about Capone snitching on Havoc younger brother Killer Black. According to Capone, he lied to the police not only to get himself out of trouble, but Killer Black as well. Capone wasn't present when Killer Black murdered the guy for some Walkman speakers back in 94. When Prodigy died, a lot of people from Queens didn't pay their respect. A mural was painted in Queens Bridge to honor Prodigy but was defaced immediately. After being cleaned up, it was defaced once again days later. The mural ended being erased and painted over completely. Nori and Prodigy had a chance to talk before his death. CNN had their ups and downs over the years. They would argue and not speak to each other for a while, but the two always made up. They've been friends for over three decades. They're basically brothers. The War Report album gave hip hop fans a special feeling. Back in 97, it was played heavy in every ghetto in America. People felt the realness. Nori and Capone both were really drug dealers. They both shot multiple people and they've both been to prison. Capone's flow back in 96 and 97 was loved by hip hop fans. It was smooth and fresh. He had that Queensbridge style flow. If he didn't get locked up those times, Capone would have gave fans a solo classic album. Nori's style is one of a kind. He's now one of the most loved rappers ever. He later moved to Miami with his family. In 2009, Nori teamed up with DJ FN to host a satellite radio show for Sirius Sexum called Militainment Crazy World Radio. Years later, the two would start the biggest and greatest podcast ever, Drink Champs. Well, that's the Capone and North story. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.